Good morning. And welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. A special welcome to the family and friends who surround uh, Nash Lewis Warmka, who is being baptized this morning. Um, we're excited to celebrate as today he is uh, joined together with God and uh, named as a beloved child of God. And so that'll be a later in worship. A special thanks to Brianna Wagner, who is singing several baptismal songs then. And so thank you so much, Brianna, for uh, singing and um, helping us highlight that part of our worship service. Um, <clears throat> can I say something, Brianna? <laughs> Brianna is sporting a little extra bling as she got, she became engaged to be married. She's sitting next, next to her um, fiance, Brett. And so we congratulate you, Brianna Wagner. <laughs> And we're excited. Brett's a wonderful guy, and they worship regularly on Wednesdays, and so Brett is here most every Wednesday with her. Um, congratulations, and we're excited. Then uh, the other part of our worship service, the body of our worship service, is also then highlighting uh, the trip that the youth made. It was 10 from our church went to the national ELCA National Youth Gathering. Uh, it was held the, the last few days of June and the beginning of July. Um, they gathered together with 32,000 other ELCA members down in Houston, Texas. Um, they got through the heat and all the walking um, to gather together in the Energy Center every day. Um, <clears throat> where together they learned uh, more about how God changes everything in our lives. And so today it's our opportunity to hear some of the stories then of their youth gathering. Um, we are excited that they could share those with us. Um, in a way, we were with you those days that you were gone, that whole week you were gone, because for almost two years, the congregation helped you do fundraising and was excited to send you. Um, and I know you didn't hear all this stuff, but even one week Chris Tachi read scripture and was able to share then what, when she came up front to share scripture that she was so glad that we were helping support you because she, uh, because their son Marsha went to the youth gathering. So we have connections in a lot of different ways and are excited now to hear these stories. And so we thank you. And um, a special thanks, and if you guys could stand up, to the two adults who were the chaperones or the adult leaders, Nicole Swanson, and Taylor Ellis, if you can stand. They were the brave ones <laughs> who spent a week with these kids and guided them and night and day got them where they needed to be and did stuff with them. So thank you so much for volunteering to serve as adult leaders. With that then, we'll begin worship. Um, I invite you to rise. We're going to sing one hymn uh, out of the, the red hymnal. We'll sing it through twice. And then the second hymn is on the back of your bulletin. So please rise as we sing.
join Kayla now for the call to worship as printed on the cover of your bulletin. God, my God, I yelled for help and you put me together. All you saints, sing your hearts out to God. Thank God personally. But across a lifetime, there is only love. The nights of crying your eyes out give way to days of laughter. We are God's beloved. Then, then you look. Then you looked the other way, and I fell to pieces. You did it. You changed wild lament into whirling dance. I'm about to burst a song. I can't keep quiet about you. God, my God, I can't thank you enough. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who speaks truth to our world. The love of God. Who calls us to new life. And the communion of the Holy Spirit. Who gathers us together into one body of believers. Be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. You called Moses by name through the burning bush and sent him to speak truth to power. You invited the woman at the well to leave her struggles behind and to place her hope in you. You encouraged Philip to surrender to your word and your grace forever changed the life of the Ethiopian eunuch. You gave your only son to die on a cross to show the world that your love does indeed change everything. Inspire us through this worship to listen for your call, be reminded of your love, surrender to your grace, and to find hope in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This time I invite you to be seated. And I invite kids to come up for the kids' message. to be here today. Hey. Has any of you, have you ever been to the ocean? Who's been to the ocean? You have? What do they have in the ocean? What's in the water on the beach? Sharks? I hope they're not on the, and what? Whales? And what else? And dolphins? What can you look for? Shells. Does everybody know what a seashell looks like? Are they all the same? They are. They're all the same size and color. No, they look different, kind of like us. We all look different. Some have dark hair, some have blonde hair, some have long hair, some have short hair, some have piggy tails, right? So when we went to Houston, we got to go to Galveston, and some of our kids had never seen a white sand beach or water that big. So it was pretty cool. You've never seen that either? Yeah. So there are um, different shells that are at the beach. So what I have to talk about is the best time that we found was to look for, that we heard about, the best time to look is early in the morning and after storms. Do you know why? They come in in the water, don't they, with the storms? Um, all those rough waves from the storms bring in lots and lots of shells. And there are zillions of shells after hurricanes that happened with Hurricane Harvey in, her in Houston. So my friend Peggy loves to walk on the beach and look for shells. And lots of times she and a friend go walking on the beach just to look for shells. Peggy goes in one direction and her friend goes in the other. And usually Peggy's picked up lots of shells, but the other lady usually just has two or three. 
Would you rather have lots of shells or just two or three? Lots of shells. So when they met back together, they compare their shells. They see what the other lady or what their shells look like compared to the other person's. Um, and the one gal said, Peggy said, her friend said to her, they're all broken. So would you keep the broken shells or would you keep the perfect shells? Perfect shells. That's what everybody would probably take, right? Because you don't want a broken one, right? No. So if we have a perfect shell, are we all perfect? We are? We're all perfect. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> We're all perfect. We're never naughty. Are we sometimes kind of naughty to our brothers or sisters or we take a toy from somebody or they take one from us and we get mad at them? So we're not perfect. We're not, we're not a perfect shell, are we? We kind of get, right? You're like, I don't care. <laughs> so if you had a perfect shell, are you perfect? No. Do we sin sometimes and say things that we maybe didn't mean? If we get mad at somebody, yeah. But God always forgives us, right? You hope so. We do too. So when we have a perfect shell, um, because I remember stories from Sunday school when I was little, and Jesus stopped what he was doing to help broken people. So the blind man he healed, or the man who couldn't walk, or the man who had sores on his body, Jesus stopped to fix that broken person. And so I am so glad that Jesus is not like Peggy's friend because she did not want to keep the broken ones. She only wanted the perfect ones. She walked right on by most of them. And Jesus is like Miss Peggy. He sees something beautiful in each of us, and he knows just where he can use us. And he especially likes the broken ones because, he, because we've been stepped on and thrown back so many times that we're just so happy that we could see him in all of us. So what our kids are going to do today is they are going to give each of you a seashell from the Galveston Beach. And I want you guys to try to keep that seashell. And every time that you think that Jesus doesn't love you or that you're broken, I want you to look at that seashell and remember that you're perfect in God's eyes. Because as Pastor Mary says every week, what are, who are we children of? We're all, our house? Okay, that too. But we're all children of who? God. We're all children of God, right? Okay. So our kids are going to come up and give you each a seashell. And they're all different, just like you guys. Some are big, some are small. Some are yellow, some are white, some are pink. You have one to give? Yep, yeah, you can give them a couple. Too. They can have two. Say a prayer. We're going to say a prayer. Okay, take your hands. Take your hands and put them together. Okay, and let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Even in our brokenness, even in our brokenness, you love us all. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Please read responsibly. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. 
If you, Lord, should mark inequalities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in this and and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in, hope in the Lord, for in the Lord there is a, a steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Here he is. Chapter 2. <clears throat> it wasn't so long ago that you were mired in that old stagnant life of sin. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then exhaled disobedience. We all did it. All of us doing what we felt like doing when we felt like doing it. All of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with the whole lot of us. Instead, immense in mercy and with an incredible love, he embraced us. He took our sin-dead lives and made us alive in Christ. He did this all on his own, with no help from us. Then he picked us up and set us down in the highest heaven in company with Jesus, our Messiah. Now God has us where he wants us, with all the time in this world and next to the shower grace and kindness upon us in Jesus Christ. Saving is all is that is all his idea and all his work all we do is trust in him and enough to let him do it it's god's gift from start to finish we didn't play the major role if we did we'd probably go around bragging that we'd done the whole thing no 
We neither make nor save ourselves. God does both the making and saving. He creates each of us by Jesus Christ to join him in the work he does. The good work he has gotten ready for us to do, work we better be doing. Word of God, word of life. This time I invite you to sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, and it's printed in your bulletin. And a lot of these songs that we used today were songs that were used at the youth gathering. First of all, I'd like to say just thank you for all of your support that got us to Houston in the first place. Again, a lot of us, um, some of us didn't ha haven't been on an airplane before, hadn't seen the ocean, so it was really awesome to experience things like that. But the main thing was to experience uh, how this changes everything with 32,000 other youth down in Houston. So that was really awesome to be able to be one community and I think we all really learned a lot about the ELCA in general and it was ma three main days that we stayed down there and um, three days of mass gathering so the mass gathering was like this big huge concert and they had um, really awesome talented artists and speakers from around the country and around the world so there are three main messages. The first main theme was how God's love changes everything. And we learned a story about the woman at the well and how she wasn't worthy of um, God's love in some people's mind. And she, uh, Jesus had asked for a drink of water. And she said, well, I'm a Jew. And 
you are not. Um, and she's had five husbands before, and so she didn't really understand why Jesus would want to drink from her, but it's because of God's love, and that provides the living water. Then on Friday, I think we learned a lot about grace. The word grace was a heavy theme throughout the whole thing, and we learned about Philip and the Ethiopian man, that again, he wasn't worthy, but because of God's grace, in God's eyes, he was baptized because he was someone that um, people kind of shunned, but it was really God's grace that he, he asked, what is there standing in the way of me getting baptized today? And God had said, nothing. And that was also our synod day, so we got to uh, be with people from our area. So there's, uh, I think people recognized people. Uh, there's how many thousands of people in the, in the service day there is 10,000 yeah in our in our synod it's the second largest synod in the ELCA so we had the largest gathering of people and it was really cool to get intermingled with everyone and see um, just familiar faces and meet a lot of people as well so they really made us get up be active and go meet other people from all over and then Saturday was our service learning day. And some people got service, that's where we learned, or we wore these shirts. And some people actually um, got indoor jobs or like a more learning type of thing. But we got our hands dirty and we got to be out in the heat and the sun. And it was a good experience um, to be sweaty the rest of the day. But we learned a lot. And it was a long day and exhausting but we were cleaning up one of the, it was a beautiful park in Houston that we were weeding and picking up, um, trimming trees and bringing them to a brush pile. And we did that in 100 degree weather. So it was a good experience. Um, and that was also the theme for that day was God's hope changes everything. And we learned about his resurrection and how um, there's always something to look forward to, and um, the story of the two travelers walking along the path after the resurrection, and Jesus actually appeared to them, and they didn't even recognize him as he was walking along this path. So it was um, kind of an eye-opening experience that we need to see God in all of these places. So he might be walking right along with you. You just have to turn to him and... Um, have hope that there is something great out there for you. So Service Learning Day helped us with that. Um, in our guidebook that me and Nicole got, there was a quote in there that talked about, or this quote said, the best journeys answer questions that in the beginning you didn't even know to ask. And I think that was one thing that we all kind of experienced is we didn't really know what to expect when we got there, but that's kind of the best journeys is when you don't know what to expect and you learn a ton from it. So each day there was a little theme and a mass gathering, and the, it was so great to watch the kids um, just worship together and have their hands around each other and um, swaying to the music and just all 32,000 people just, um, just so happy and one body. It was really cool to see. So we're going to have the kids all kind of talk about one experience that they um, had or something that touched them or something that was memorable. So we'll start with Kayla. <laughs> okay. So every night when we were down in the stadium, some of the nights we made it onto the floor with all of some other people, others. One of the nights where we were part of the crew, the mass crew, so we got to sit down there too. And me and Allie we usually go up to the front to meet some new people, but I'd always get separated from her. So I'd always be by myself. So I got to make a friends with a whole bunch of new people from like Montana, Maine, New Jersey, almost everywhere. And everybody's so kind. Normally I don't go towards strangers because taught not to, but there I did. And I learned a whole bunch of new things about people from across the whole country. And it's quite interesting. Apparently Alaska isn't just snow. So that was nice. Um, and one of the nights there was a performer, Torn Wells, and one of his songs was based on the quote, to be loved but not known is comforting but superficial. To be known and not loved is our greatest fear. But to be fully known and truly loved is, well, a lot like being loved by God. And that was one of the quotes that stuck with me throughout the entire gathering. And he was a very moving 
performer, one of the best ones that was down there. And I just want to thank the congregation for all the support that they gave us. I definitely learned things down there that I'm always going to keep with me throughout life. It was definitely an experience I will never forget. So, thank you. Um, one, of my favorite memory, one of my favorite memories would probably be oh, when all the performers were singing and stuff like that and everybody had their arms around each other swaying. And it was just really impactful to see that we're all one church and we're all together. And also getting down on the floor with everybody and getting up to the front and getting that experience was pretty cool. So my favorite memory is probably just getting to meet everyone who has the same faith as us and it was just amazing to see how welcoming everyone was and it was just an awesome experience all together. And I want the congregation to know that I really appreciate all the time and effort that was put into getting us to Texas and it would be amazing to go again. My favorite part about this trip was being part of the Mass Cast crew. This is a once in a lifetime experience for me, seeing how our little group can make what was part of the biggest change imaginable. Being a part of a 32,000 group, that was just amazing. And being how the Mass Cast crew was about a thousand people, but seeing everyone, one of the highlights was about seeing how people with their flashlights on their phone would put their colored water bottles on the flashlight and hold it up. Just seeing, turning around and seeing that throughout the whole stadium, seeing 32,000 people do that was just breathtaking, just watching that. I wanted to thank the congregation for all the support and all like the help that you have helped with us getting to Texas and praying for us while we were there. My favorite memory was seeing how many kids came down. Favorite memory was seeing how many kids came down to help this Houston area and how kind they were all were. I want to I'm grateful for the experience of going on this youth gathering. And I've learned a lot from this trip. I'm very thankful for everyone who helped me and everyone else to go on this trip. My favorite memory from the trip was seeing the whole stadium light up like daylight as all 30,000 of the people in attendance took their flashlight on their phones out and it was just very breathtaking. And I would like to thank the congregation. I'd like the congregation to know that I'm very thankful for all the fundraising help for the trip. It was an amer amazing experience, one that I will never forget. Thank you. Um, one of my favorite memories was like all like the lights and seeing like all the different kind of new people. Mm. Mass gatherings with lots of different speakers and bands was definitely most memorable for me. It was also a lot of fun to meet new people from all over, from Alaska to Hawaii and everywhere in between. Thank you for all of your amazing support. I had an absolutely wonderful time. All right, well, years of planning um, with so many fundraisers, thousands of miles traveled, five amazing days at the 2018 ELCA Youth Gathering, and now it's over. Or is it? The gathering shouldn't just stay in Houston. It needs to be brought home, and we have. We've shared and lived, and it's much part of thanks of each of our stories is to um, thank you all for allowing us the opportunity to experience Houston and all of the um, things that some of our kids were not aware of. Every day when we traveled on the light rail to the stadium, we'd go through different areas. So you'd hit one area and there would be homeless people sleeping on the sidewalks, in the parks, um, on the street. 
you'd go into the next, which was the historic museum district, and it was very well kept, very, um, the grass was very, um, everything was up, kept up very well. You'd get into the next area, and it would be um, some homeless people as well, but it was a little bit nicer area, I guess, if you want to say that, and then you would get to the stadium. So we saw that every day as we traveled to and from the stadium. The last day that we were there, um, JB, Andrew, Allison, and myself went on to another metro tra train, and that area was um, quite a lot more desolate. You could go in one area and you just look down street after street after street and there were just houses that were still boarded up from Hurricane Harvey. Um, people basically just left their homes, abandoned everything. The grass was just about as tall as I was probably. Um, and, and that area is, is still like that a year later after Hurricane Harvey. So it was, it was very humbling and very eye-opening, I think, to a lot of our students as well and the kids that went to see different areas because we get so complacent with where we live and um, like wells and surrounding towns. So it was nice to see them experience a world outside of here. And I think one thing that really um, was very inspirational for, I know Allison and I, every day when we would get on the train, we would try to let the locals on because we knew that they had jobs and families and things to get to. And when you're trying to transport 30,000 screaming kids on trains, <laughs> um, we wanted to make sure that they were on first so they could get to their jobs, which provided their, their food and housing and everything else. So um, Allison and I started speaking with one gal that got on the train and, and every day at the end of the day we would have our closing 15 and we had to ask the kids where they saw God today. And that day Allison and I saw God in Luana. And she had moved down to Houston three years ago from New Jersey, and I asked her why. And she said because it was warm. She didn't want the cold anymore. And as we spoke, um, we started talking. We asked her if it would be okay if we could do our opening 15 minutes with, on the train, if she was okay with that. And she said, absolutely, amen. So we, we did that on a couple of two days, I think. We did our opening 15, and it was um, very interesting that people were very welcoming to allowing us to um, express our faith in God, even while sitting on a train with how many thousands of people. So Luana will be my um, how I saw God, because she had the most soft-spoken voice, but I think she had the biggest message. And I think that that's something that we all have kind of brought back from Houston is that even though we are all individuals in one small community, we can make a change and we are the future and these kids are our future and they know that, that um, it changes everything by the faith of God. So thank you. And I want to thank the congregation as well for allowing Taylor and I to travel with the kids and experience with them. And I've learned a lot of things about each child, even though I had most of them in Sunday school and Wednesday school growing up. We saw different sides of all of them down there. And it was um, very heartwarming because they were all very unconditional love to everyone that they met. There was no judgment, it seemed, when you were sitting in there with 30,000 people. Nobody looked at the color of skin, the color of hair, how much money somebody had, didn't have, what kind of car they drove or didn't drive. It was just unconditional love amongst 30,000 kids, and it was pretty awesome to see. So, And the one thing I learned is that my child does know how to pull weeds in Houston, but not at home. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks so much to these gathering group.
Christian is over here. I invite you to follow along with the order of service and the insert in your bulletin. Baptism is a gift from God. It's in the waters of baptism that we are reborn children of God and given eternal life. Baptism frees us from sin and death by joining us to Jesus Christ. So I turn now to you sponsors. Selected then because the family knows that you will not only love Nash, but pray for him and help guide him in his life of faith. Would you please present him for baptism? You presented Nash Lewis for baptism. I ask you then, will you share Christ's love with him in your words and in your actions? Will you treasure him as a special gift from God? Will you care for him with the love of Christ? Will you pray for him that God's presence would fill his life? Will you teach him? Will you teach him how much Jesus loves him? Will you teach him that he's a child of God forever? Will you bring him to the gathering of God's people so that he can grow up worshiping and praising God? Will you teach him to pray? Will you introduce him to the scriptures? Will you see that he's given every opportunity to grow in Christ? I ask you then to publicly take a stand for Jesus Christ. First, I ask you this question. Do you renounce the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? Do you believe, and I ask the congregation to join in, do you believe in God, our creator, our savior, our counselor? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you hold him here over the bowl. Nash Lewis, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your Son from the power of sin and for raising him up to a new life through this holy sacrament. Pour your Holy Spirit upon Nash Lewis, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Nash Lewis, child of God, you have been sealed 
by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. I have some gifts today, okay? So I'm going to have you hold this for me, okay? First comes this banner, okay? And we present it, okay? With this reminder that a promise. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. And then a candle that you might light on this second birthday he has, this birthday of his faith. And we present it with these words. Nash Lewis, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Now a prayer for you as parents. You've prayed a long time for this little guy. And then you worked so hard to get him here. He was in the hospital after he was born, and we prayed for him then. A prayer for you now as you continue to raise up your family. Let us pray. Oh God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon Lissa and Jade. Let them ever rejoice in the gifts that you have given to them. Make them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism so they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given to them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Members of Good Shepherd, here is our newest member. We have witnessed the baptism now of Nash. And will you pray for him? Will you share your faith with him? Will you remind him that he belongs to Christ and that as Christ's people we all belong to each other? Please welcome him in the name of Jesus. Nash Lewis, you are a child of God with us. Together with Christ, Christ, and together we are called. No, he's just so long. I'm going to take him. That makes him happy. Here he is, the newest member of Good Shepherd, the newest member of the Church of Christ. This is a little guy that we prayed so much for as he was hospitalized. After birth, how, how many weeks early was he? About well, five weeks early. And so at the beginning, he just needed some extra prayers and some extra medical care. But here he is now, healthy as can be. Uh, the newest member of the Warm Cup family, but the newest member of our family as well. And he is one whom we ask you to continue to pray for. And ask you to be examples of faith as you feed others teach nash that he that's one of his roles in life is to feed hungry people and as you grow up in the faith and you see nash in wednesday school and sunday school classes remind him that you saw his baptism and that you remember that he was named a beloved child of god right and as you see him growing up as a neighbor, it's a chance for you. Oh, you've got a little present from him. <laughs> as you watch him grow up in your neighborhood, it's a chance for you to remind him that not only is he a neighbor of yours, so that he's a part of your family, is a member of the congregation. And so we give thanks to God for him this day. Please welcome him with a round of applause. The baby. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please rise now and greet one another with this peace which comes from God.
At this time, the ushers will receive your offering. I invite you to rise as we sing together hymn number 595. faith and discipleship we give thanks to God for God's merciful compassion as we pray for the church in the world and all those in need holy God we give you thanks that you have given us opportunities to grow in our faith we're grateful for the group that went from Good Shepherd to Houston to gather to worship to learn and to serve with thousands of others we pray that they may continue to be blessed by this experience to serve on behalf of your holy compassion, God. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of Nash Warmka, who was baptized here just now this morning and named as your beloved child. We give you thanks for his safe arrival into this world, and we pray, God, 
that you would bless him as he grows and as he thrives. Guide Nash all throughout his life so that he can grow to be a faithful servant of you, God. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, give us faith and make us whole. Today we pray for those who grieve. We lift up to you, God, the families of Kent Yovasaker and Mike Winstead who grieve their deaths. Look with compassion on all those who cry this day. Give them hope through the promise of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, give us faith and make us whole. Ease the pain and suffering of all who are hurting this day. We pray for those who suffer because of the wildfires in the West, those who suffer because of the flooding and the storms throughout our country. Soothe the suffering of all who battle disease. Give courage to those who walk along the broken and bring peace to those who hunger for wholeness in their lives. We lift up in our prayers a beloved a uh, loved one of the congregation, D, who is hospitalized today. We pray, God, that you would help him in his suffering and give him hope. We lift up in prayer Cliff Trepto, Irene Niebuhr, Robert Beyer, Bebo Getchell. We pray, God, that you would bring them comfort and bring them peace and bring them healing. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we lift up these prayers and the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your everlasting love and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And then the benediction is printed there in your bulletin. May you be blessed by God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We will live in the new life of Jesus Christ who has changed everything. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please sing now our sending song, This Little Light of Mine, 677, Red Hymnal. First of all, there is a poster board down by the front door with messages, more messages from the youth who were at the youth gathering. And then some of them are by the side door and some are here in the back as well to greet you and thank you once again. There is Coffee Fellowship downstairs. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.